<laughs> so uh, the meeting of the Woodbury Town Select Board is now in session at 6 p.m. So it's an open meeting for any public comment. I have a public comment. Sir. I'm just going to step in front of the camera. And you are Jim Kelty, right? right. I have a written statement I'd like to read. Well, this won't take long. My name is Jim Kelty. Uh, I do not live in Woodbury, but I do work here occasionally since I come at least a couple of times a month to film public events for Hardwood Community Television. Today I want to go on the record and express my concerns about the Select Board's plan to install a public Wi-Fi hotspot in the area surrounding the Woodbury Town Hall. I'm concerned about the plan's potential impact on the people who live and work within the boundaries of the proposed hotspot. Currently, there is little public awareness of the harmful effects of wireless technology, and the public is not adequately protected by the safety guidelines issued by the Federal Communications Commission, the FCC, whose safety limits for human exposure to wireless radiation have not been updated since 1996. Last year, a federal appeals court ruled against the FCC regarding its 1996 safety limits. The court found the FCC ignored numerous organizations, scientists, and medical doctors who called on the agency to update limits. And the court found the FCC failed to address these issues. Impacts of long-term wireless exposure, impacts to children, the testimony of people injured by wireless radiation, impacts to wildlife and the environment, impacts to the developing brain and reproduction. The, peti the petitioners in the case filed 11,000 pages of evidence of harm from wireless technology, which the FCC ignored. In light of this recent federal court ruling, select board members may want to consider delaying their plan at least until the FCC issues updated safety guidelines. I also want to point out that the state of New Hampshire formed a commission to study the environmental and health effects of wireless technology. The commission submitted its final report to the governor of New Hampshire in November 2020. According to the report, the safety assurances for wireless technology have come into question because of thousands of peer-reviewed studies documenting the deleterious health effects associated with wireless radiation exposure. The report also states that due to the large number of radiating devices in today's environments, exposure for people is many times greater than when radiation thresholds were established. And the nature of today's radiation has been shown to be more harmful than the lower data rate signals that were prevalent before. The majority of the, of the New Hampshire Commission voted to support 15 recommendations to the New Hampshire governor, including phasing out Wi-Fi in schools and public libraries. Another recommendation calls upon state environmental agencies to develop wireless radiation safety limits that will protect trees, plants, birds, insects, and pollinators. In light of the New Hampshire report, I urge the select board to inform the people who live near the town hall about your plan, and better yet, invite them to a select board meeting to discuss it so you can get some input from the people who will be exposed 24 hours a day once you turn on the new transmitter in the town hall. Because if those people read the New Hampshire report, they might have some concerns. Thank you. Thanks, Jim. Is that something you appreciate you're going to leave with us? Or can you... Uh, I, I, I can, can, or I can, can email it to you. Yeah, email okay. us the report. Okay. That'd be okay. perfect. Thank you. That way we can find it really quickly. Jim, thank you. Sure. And, and did you say in there what the radius might be of the possible harmful effects of... Radius of. I bet the report hasn't though. How far we should 
be concerned? You said there was a radius of... Um, you mean the radius of the hotspot you're planning? Yeah, you're planning? how many people should be concerned? Well, I just remember in the previous meetings you were talking about it would be it would reach people across the street mm -hmm. from the town hall. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know the exact mm -hmm. radius okay. of the, right. the hotspot. We have started, but come on in, please. Jim, thank you. Sure. So we're still in open meeting. If there are any other public comments? Maggie's on the agenda, and Josh, Josh mm -hmm. is on the agenda. So anybody who's not on the agenda, who is that you? No. You want to say something? You're not here for anything? Just okay. Okay. Well, I hope you enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Diana, are there any adjustments to our select board agenda? Uh, no. Okay, so public comment and open meeting is over. Uh, we will approve bills and payroll orders after the meeting. We have already approved minutes from the July 25th select board meeting. And we've also approved minutes from the July 18th special meeting mm -hmm. of the select board. So, we have an applicant for our town health officer position. And that is... Me. Yeah. <laughs> I'm Josh Corn. Josh what? Corn like a vegetable. Corn, okay, yeah. I should I did see your emails. <laughs> And you bought a place in Woodbury? Yep, 521 Buck Lake Road. Which house is that? It's the last, it's a not, the house isn't finished yet. So oh, it's, it's the one that's not finished. The one okay, that's not finished. I know. <laughs> so hopefully that will be finished soon. Yeah, yeah that's great. So. Yeah. yeah. All right. And it's not uh, Stuart Bagley's. <laughs> uh, no, is that the, the abandoned one on the Buck yeah. Lake side? Uh, yes, no. So well, maybe you can buy that next. Yes, well, maybe so. <laughs> so tell us about yourself. Yes, so I'm a naturopathic doctor in Stowe. Um, I practice at a patient center primary care home. I'm really interested in individual health and public health. And when I was looking at the town website, I noticed that this position was open. And I like to be involved wherever I live. And I thought this would be a good way to get back to the community, meet people, and you said that, I think you said in one of your emails that you had looked at the duties and responsibilities of the town health officer online. Yes. And there's nothing there that scared you? No. <laughs> Did I it talk about exciting. enforcement? Yes. I, okay. I, I All right. It's exciting. Yeah. I love paperwork That's a big and one. forms and uh, <laughs> pretty detail oriented. Oh, so yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, I like tasks. Well, enforcement sometimes usually involves, you know, face to face making people upset. But, yeah. But well, it has, has to be done. It does. And, you know, I, I work with people every day, day mm -hmm. to day, and I tell them things that are scary and upsetting and mm -hmm. uncomfortable. And so I feel like I'm able to hold that space and talk to people in a way that's uh, understanding. And that'd be nice. Yeah. It's a lot of my training, I feel like. I feel like I'm decent at that. <laughs> Excellent. Anybody else have any questions? Our acting um, health officer, by default, is the chairman of the board, and he's not here tonight, but he would be glad to give up that okay. default position. <laughs> We are all glad. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Yes, we're appreciative of your your willingness to step forward. Oh, wonderful! I'm very excited about it. I downloaded the manual. And oh, I'm excited. Excellent. Yeah. Get started if if you would have. Great. Yeah. Excellent. So, I would like to make a motion to appoint Josh Corn as our new town health officer. I'll second that motion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Josh, thank you very much. Yeah, that's right. And please, please to hang around and yeah, please stick around for a minute. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we'd like to meet you more. Yeah, mm -hmm. but that would be terrific. Mm. Thank you very much for your willingness oh, I'm to, happy to, to, to serve in that position. That's terrific. I, uh, I, I, I had to hold off until the ink was dry on the on the contract. <laughs> oh, <laughs> okay. I saw that a month ago when I put the offer in. I was like, I want to do that. So. 
Oh, nice. I waited until three days after. It'd be nice if we could make that a requirement for everybody that moves to town. Yeah, we'll see what happens. With that. <laughs> <laughs> Good idea. Put that in our new zoning regulation. <laughs> I think we're fortunate to uh, have the um, uh, the managing uh, the head manager director of uh, Central Vermont Hospital. Who just moved to Woodbury? What? Yeah. Who's that? Um, Gamet. He is uh, actually bought um, Charlie's place up behind me. He and his husband, um, Jamie, um, moved in, and he is the managing director now of all of CBH. What's wow. your name again? It's it's, it's the one with the weird name that bought the big log cabin. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Oh, it's, great. I think it's Gamet. He's um, I think he's Turkish. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. And his cool. husband works at home. He works for an environmental mm -hmm. company. Oh, nice. Interesting. So just uh, I've met them and their dogs, and they are just really great people. Nice. Yeah. Terrific. Yeah. So two doctors in town. That's no, good. Yeah. <laughs> We're a little ahead of schedule, but um, we can see if we can move on. Miss Diana, do you have any objections to that? No, it's fine. Uh, Miss Maggie, yes. we have plans for a new wellness center. Yes. Would you like to introduce that topic? Yes, I would. Thank you so much for um, letting me come here tonight and explain a little bit about um, what we want to do. Um, these are my partners. This is Quint Welters and Nikhil. Mm -hmm. And, yep. mm -hmm. and um, Quint's from, they're both from Cabot. Yep. Um, but let me, I'd like to tell you a little bit why, of where this started. In um, 89, I was diagnosed with thyroid cancer. And um, I had the tumor removed and went on to radiation. Then in 91, I was diagnosed with breast cancer and I had a lumpectomy and went through radiation again and a series of um, chemo. Um, in 2013, I was diagnosed with a brain tumor. Um, most of you know I was the owner of the White Rock um, across the lake in, um, on Route 14. And because of that, I had to close the restaurant. My balance left me I was falling into things, um, mm. migraines that were just really unbearable that I still get. Um, because the tumor of where it is is inoperable, too close to my brain stem, um, plus it had already done things wrapped around facial nerves mm. and I've lost my hearing. And so if they tried to take it out, it would be a really good possibility that I'd be paralyzed on one side of my body. So I opted for fractionated radiation, which I went to every day, six days a week for four months. And um, it st stopped the tumor, but I was still left with all these other things, especially the migraines. Um, I started doing research myself on alternative medicine to help me with these. They had put me on high, high uh, doses of morphine for mm. when I get these migraines because it gets to the point where I get very violently ill. My body doesn't tolerate it. I didn't want to be on this stuff. It was the only thing that was working at the time. But um, as you know, with morphine, a lot comes with it. There's mm. not being able to eat and there's constipation. And I just didn't feel opiates was the way. So I started looking for alternative things. During this whole time, I was kind of um, journaling this whole um, thing mm. on Facebook um, about what was happening to me and what I was doing. I had gone to Patients Alliance in Montpelier, which is a cannabis medical dispensary, and talked to the nurse there. And they had suggested that I start a regimen of, it's called Rick Simpson oil, but basically it is, um, high, high, high doses of THC. And so I was taking it at night, every night. I was ingesting up to five grams a day. Um, and I started walking better. I was going into therapy. 
but because of my journaling and on Facebook, people started just showing up at my house saying, you know, my mom's sick. What are you doing? Mm -hmm. You know, can I get this? Can you help us? And I was just handing it out, um, making my own tinctures. That led to um, my my dad's on his last. You know, he's dying of cancer, and they are just pumping him full of opiates, and we're nervous, and he's not making any sense, and we want to be able to talk to him. And so I was making tinctures for a lot of people who were at the end of life care, who didn't want to be completely zoned out on opiates, but have some sort of pain management, and be able to still talk to their loved ones and converse. So that put me into taking courses in death work. And for the last year, um, I have been doing a lot of um, death work in the community, um, in the surrounding communities. I work with um, Vermont Health and Hospice. And I, I go in and offer that, these things to people as an alternative to um, medications that they just may not want their parents to take or family to take, but it's just something that's an alternative. So when the legalization it came, um, it, I was able to grow my own plants um, because as you know, um, a lot of plants that are grown on the black market are grown with chemicals and nutrients that are not organic and you've already got people that are dying and they don't need this stuff in their bodies. Mm. So people knew that I was growing organically and so um, I was able to pass this along to them as far as medication. When um, the recreational came about, um, I decided that it would probably be best if I could offer this somehow legally. And since the restaurant was not something that I could do anymore, I figured that if I could possibly open a wellness center um, surrounded around that premise of giving these people organic medicine and information and alternatives to um, opiates. Now, um, Quint and Nikhil is uh, are friends of mine. Um, Quint is a hemp grower in Cabot. He's very well known. He owns Quint, uh, Quint Essential, and his family owns, um, you might know, the Rhapsody, the natural um, um, food company. And so when I met with Quint and I said, this is something that I want to do, I knew he was an organic farmer. and and wanted to go in that direction because I don't want to open something and not have something available and obviously I can't grow things enough in my, in my house. Um, what we would like to do is open something similar to a CSA where it's a com community supported agriculture. Um, this would allow people to get medicine at a reasonable cost I'm, you know, we're right at the beginning of this, so um, there's so many things that, you know, the, the cannabis board has not okayed any applications yet for retail sales, so um, we're still, there's a, still a lot of unknowns, but what I wanted to let you guys know was this, what we're looking toward offering the community is um, a not a um, like a um, you know flags come by your pot kind of thing. This is not what we're we're looking for. We're looking for um, a place where people can come for answers, where they can come for medicine and um, and information. And so I am just hoping that um, I had gotten my 40 signatures for um, to, to apply for a special meeting, but I had um, some people on there that weren't registered voters, and m my um, wording wasn't correct. So I'm in the process of redoing that. Um, 
hopefully by tomorrow I can have the rest of them again I'm trying to call them <laughs> putting let them know what, um, what I'm doing on this petition are you having it so they have a signature plus a printed yes thank you and not only is it a signature and printed but I'm doing I'm doing the printing so it's legible so because even some people's printing isn't the best mm. so um, I am saying is your name spelled do, 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 and then mm -hmm. I'm, and then I'm doing it myself so you can clearly read it so um, and is there a column on there to ask if they are a registered Woodbury voter yes there is a, um, a line here it says are you a Woodbury registered voter perfect and then, yes <laughs> and um, yeah. So you talked about um, maybe having other wellness providers involved? Correct. So um, when, when I found out, well, when I decided to do this, um, I work with um, a number of people, um, death doulas in the area that I work with, that I went to school with, um, homeopathic people. Um, I don't know if you know Emily Ruff from Sage Mountain in Barrie. Um, she is, um, has expressed um, that she wanted to, to help in any way that she can. She mm -hmm. is a, an herbal practitioner. Um, I have had um, Michelle, who is part of um, uh, Inner Rivers uh, Acupuncture, express mm -hmm. interest. And this is something that we would really like to be able to just offer all these different aspects of wellness mm -hmm. to a person that is having issues with whatever they're, you know, and if, it, and if we can't provide it for them there, we can at least shoot them in the right direction where they need to go to get the help that they need. Mm -hmm. So why wouldn't this qualify as medical marijuana? You have to have a special medical license or something? Well, or? no, not exactly. I'm not going to, you know, I want to be completely transparent mm -hmm. here, and I don't want to say that, you know, doubt. people, if, you, if we're opening a retail cannabis place, there are going to be people that come in to buy cannabis for recreational. It's not something that we uh, are going to um, advertise as this is what, what you know you know come by your pot here like i said we want to keep it as a um as a place for a community supported agriculture supporting um quince farm also supporting the community as far as information you know if you've got kids coming in and they're like you know i want to buy some pot you know i mean if they go to massachusetts they're just going to sell it to them and this is a way for for at least somebody to say, well, what's going on with you? You know, what is there, do you have a medical reason that you want to do this? Is, you know, and questions can be asked. So, mm -hmm. yeah. And with the medical market on how it's unfolding, it's very limited. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, we all know it's cannabis and it does its thing. So, so in order how, to and buy as professionals in yeah. our field, and as for five five years commercial mm -hmm. cannabis farmer in the legal hemp market, I can really say it's I know a lot about it. Mm -hmm. And to hold that back, I'd love to mm -hmm. work with Maggie to bring that straight to the customer because growing cannabis is not just here we grow it and here we give it. No, it's from aroma uh, um, extraction from terpenes to cannabinoids mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. formulating it to a dosage level. We have amazing technology to actually bring it down to a non-psychoactive dosage point. Mm -hmm. from the so you have market. that in your company now? Yeah, in so we have that from great. the hemp market and how mm -hmm. we can incorporate that into the cannabis mm -hmm. market is just mm -hmm. like, just now we are really at the forefront of it. Don't know mm -hmm. how the recreational market will enter. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, even hemp as a, a CBD and um, CBG grower, that mm -hmm. is a real asset because we're not just coming from a you know rec market. We're coming from a very medical market. Mm -hmm. That's why we got into it in the first place. So, um, and now we can actually cater to mm -hmm. um, specific patients. Mm -hmm. So CSA catering we can actually talk about hey, what's wrong with you mm -hmm. oh we have 
one out of 80 different strains that can actually cater to that mm -hmm. because it's a combination form. So in order to buy from medical marijuana, you have yeah. to have like a doctor's note or something like that? You have, you have to have a prescription. card that's written through a the A prescription, state. Yeah. okay. Yeah. 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 I see. Yeah. Okay. And that, and, and you won't now. That yeah. has been legalized recreationally. So when you are closer to actually opening something, you will need a zoning permit, but it shouldn't be very tricky when I mean, right. you're just changing the use. Right. It's still going to be commercial. Right. Yeah. And if we, if um, you ask the uh, voting public to approve the retail sale, that means anybody else in town can do the same thing. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. So we'll set a precedent. And that for us is exciting because we come from a long. Um, collectively, we have a lot of background in this. So yeah. if we're the first, we'll set a, a tone, and then it's like, okay, whoever comes mm -hmm. right. to do it for money purposes, they won't survive because there's only so much population in town, and so many people go through. So having that quality, they yeah. will, will quickly decide what is going to. Have Plainfield and Marshfield approved retail sales? Uh, Plainfield, Marshall, I haven't heard. Cabot or no. any other towns around here? Hardwick, Hardwick. Montpelier. Hardwick, Hardwick did, Montpelier. yeah. Very, yeah. yeah. And it's still early. I mean, yeah. there's I mean, I probably saw, a lot of these conversations in there. I saw a map you know, on one of the websites I looked at, and it looked like they were all over the place, but then yeah. when, you zoom, when you zoom it out, it worked. Right. <laughs> yeah. exactly. 40 or 50. Yeah. 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 So it starts here, mm. having setting the tone on how do you want to handle it because it's going to go right through well, but, but having a, uh, a, uh, a window to that of a, like a wellness point of view mm -hmm. and if we know of, uh, the White Castle pizza was it's just by the water it's a <laughs> place of just ease um, I got into the industry for um, also severe yeah. injury and that's my pain uh, relief yeah. so well that's an interesting a, story I hadn't heard all that uh, mm -hmm. Didn't know that. There. I mean, I knew he had a brain cancer, yeah. uh, brain tumor. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. So what else? Um, so what she's going to do is request a special meeting. Special meeting. Yep. So, and that's why you're. And when you get your forty signatures, your signatures in, <laughs> yeah, so. go back there may be a few extras. <laughs> Make sure they sign it. And yeah. that, uh, that sounds good. Yeah. Then you'll bring that into Robin, and at that point, we'll have sixty days. And we can inform a special meeting. During which we have to um, warn the special meeting. And then we can, we don't have to hold it within 60 days. As long as we warn it. Yeah. And then we can have yeah. a special meeting and we can have more public announcement. And right. But I think you sharing all this will help with people when it comes to the special meeting. You Right. And hopefully the... The uh, what do you call it, the moderator might help might allow you to stand up and talk about what right. you plan to do. Right, because you know if it comes to that as well, I've had so many people. Um, you know, I when this all happened to me, the latest, and I thought, you know, there's got to be some reason why I now had this cancer three times. Why am I still here? <laughs> and I really feel like this is something that I need to do because I've, I've been able to help so many people and when a lot of mm. my patients found out that this was something I planned on doing they all got in touch with me and said let us know when this meeting mm -hmm. is because we will stand up and we will tell you tell them what it has done for us great excellent yeah mm -hmm. so I appreciate your time thank you okay. all right thanks Miss Maggie we appreciate it do you want your original Oh, uh, no, actually, I made copies. Okay. And I can see the numbers, so I can, I've been just kind of calling everybody. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Good luck. Thanks very much. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, thank you, gentlemen. Okay. Thanks, Miss Maggie. Thank you. Okay, we're at 6.30. It's time for the uh, town clerk's report. I forgot to ask you, Josh, if you had any questions for her. I guess not. <laughs> yes, please. My last two weeks have been total election preparation. Election preparation. <laughs> All right. Yes, miss. I'm sure. Mm.
Are we are we good with our new machines and? Yes. And we had we... to get a technician to come into the office and get one of them up and running because the program they sent me to reload did not work. Oh, well, thank you for doing that. So. Um, is there anything that we need to do down at the town hall? Mm -hmm. Or are we pretty much good? No, I just got to bring in the tabulators tomorrow morning and the printer and turn them on and we're good to go. Okay. So the one that you had to have tech help, hopefully that wasn't the brand new one. No. It was the old one. That was the old one. <laughs> Would it be a shock if it was the new one? No, I guess not. <laughs> <laughs> Just put it out there. All right. Anything so else? voting is tomorrow from 10 until 7 at the town hall. Mm -hmm. Do you have people lined up to count or in case any counting is needed? Well, hopefully my sled board members will be there. I uh, will be there. <laughs> we can. I will be there. Hopefully there's not going to be too much counting with this new tabulator. Yeah. I think we just have to count the ballots and make sure the numbers We have the same add up to a the number of ballots that actually go through, through the through machine. The tabulator. Right. And then if we have any write-ins, we have to count those. Oh, right. Hopefully there won't be many. Yeah. And we've already had 75 absentee ballots requested, and out of that, 51 of them are back. Wow. Can you check the mail? Yes. <laughs> Before the post office closes tomorrow? Yes. And Pam's going to check the drop box, and if anything comes in tomorrow night, she's bringing it up to me mm -hmm. by right. quarter of seven. Great. Sounds good. All right. Thank you, Ms. Turkey. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Ms. Brandy, can we do a town treasurer's report, please? Yes. Over the past two weeks, uh, payroll expenses, $9,109.35. AP, $40,000. $430.62. Taking in for income through cash receipts, $6,150.84. That is ranging from burial fees, records restoration, copies, Green Mountain Passport, recording, map recording, land copies, land postings, prepaid taxes, and vault fees. Um, Delinquencies, $4,461.46. The state of Vermont, $360 even. Swenson's, $8,828.80. I transferred $22,000 to cover AP costs. Um, I have sent the CPA one sheet of information. Um, they had requested 89, um, 89, 38 um, <laughs> requests, and there's three pages. So one is complete and sent to them. Um, so that's the rest of my week is going to be finishing off, mm -hmm. get, sending them stuff, and then hopefully by this weekend I can print and send out tax bills. Sounds terrific. So busy time. Mm -hmm. it's it's busy time. Lovely humidity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's jamming the copier. Um, so mm. We'll see how it goes. <clears throat> it would be nice to have a, a heating air down at the town office because one fan isn't like, you know when it's noon o'clock, you need to get out of there. <laughs> That's true. Um, so we'll see. We'll play it by ear. I may have to mm -hmm. extend for two weeks of printing. Tax bills, we'll see how it goes. Questions? Mm -hmm. I do not. Ms. Diana? No, we'll talk about the tax rate when we get there. Okay. Randy and I worked on it last week. So. Uh, Chuck, ready for the town highway report, sir? Well, We've mowed the roadsides, most of the roadsides once all the way around. And we're finishing up Wheeler Hill 
ditching and culverts and stuff. Um, we, that's kind of been a long process, but um, we finally got clawed cross into the grader, mm -hmm. and we have all the roads home now. Mm -hmm. So they're all in nice shape and all chlorided. So for the first time this summer, the roads are all decent everywhere. By the way, I did a little trip up to West Woodbury last week, and I noticed yeah, that, uh, them, uh, starting out the Thursday. starting out at the town line. That, yeah, yeah, nice job. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he does a good job. So, um, and we did the work up on the Nichols Pond Road last oh. Wednesday and Thursday. Yeah, last Wednesday and Thursday. So that's completed. Oh. Where are we on our, our, our trucks? The new one's ordered. The 10 wheel is ordered. And to tell you the truth, I've dropped the ball on getting a hold of the Rue brothers. I haven't talked to them for two weeks. So okay. I. <laughs> can't tell you, really. Okay. I will put it on my list to call tomorrow. I appreciate that. Things have been crazy, crazy here. I'm right? sure. I'm sure. I'm sure. Well, I'm sure I'm they don't sure. expect you to be bugging them all the time either. Yep. No. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> Unless it's an emergency, which I don't think it is. Yeah. No, not yet. Won't wait until it's time to put something on the right. for salt. But, <laughs> um, we're going to have to have some work done on the plows. I'm called Jeremy, he's going to come up and look at them. It'll probably be a day's worth of welding on mm -hmm. the plows and Jeremy. the grader. And what's that? Jeremy who? Walsh. Walsh. Walsh welding. Okay. We've used him for the last three or four years. Okay. He does a good job. So I called him, got on the list there. Um, did you have any luck getting hold of that girl's name down in... Number down in uh, White River. Yeah, I sent it to you. Did oh, you, you not did? get it? I did. But it was, if you haven't gotten it yet, it was a week ago. Mm -hmm. Probably my wife. I, I, will, I will send it. I will send it again. All right. Yep, no cool. problem. Thank you. Yeah. My, yep. If if you don't get something from me within a day or so, just All right. give, me a, give me cool. a call. Yeah, I want to see if I can get these aprons on these roads up through here. Yep. The potholes fixed mm. it. The one going up on the cabin road. It's three of them. It's three or, three or four, yeah. Yeah, and then the uh, uh, town farm road is bad, mm. and then Buck Lake's got a couple, and um, Bleak Hill Road's got a couple. Mm. Yeah. So I'd like to see if we could get something done with them. I'll send it again. Yeah, I guess that's about all I got. Sounds good. Thank you, yeah. Chuck. Appreciate it. Well, it's good that you're here because we have a winter sand purchase. We decided we at the at the in our executive session last week, we decided to give the contract to Gravel Construction based on your recommendation and Greg's and good. Well. Um, we just need have one thing. I need to have a name of a contact person for the town to put in this contract. What do you think? Uh, well, I'm fine to do it, but it might be better if it's Chuck, since he's the one who's going to oversee it. Yeah. So, Chuck, this is, um, this is stated, you can read this, but it's stated as, yeah. contacts have been designated as town's representative for this, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, but this is incorrect because it's not Dana Gravel. So. What do you mean? Yes, it is. Dana Gravel has been named as the contractor's, contractor's representative. representative. Yeah. Okay. Right. <laughs> Never mind. Two names in one sentence. Yeah, yep. it's confusing. Got it. <laughs> so, Chuck, I'm happy to sign it, but. It might, my name on, might not be a bad thing if you were the contact I'll, person. I'll retype the first page, but you can sign this. And I'll have. And this also, let's see. 
Acknowledgement of arbitration also needs to be signed on behalf of the town. I understand that this agreement with the contractor contains an agreement to arbitrate. After signing this document, I understand that I will not be able to bring a lawsuit concerning any dispute that may arise which is covered by the arbitration agreement unless it involves a question of constitutional or civil rights. Instead, I agree to submit any such dispute to an impartial arbitrator. Arbitration shall be administered by the American Arbitration Association in association, in accordance with its construction industry arbitration rules. So you have to sign that, and then Dana will have to sign that also. Yep. What have you got? Oh, that's just the, the last page. Okay. Yep. So I'll, I'll retype that first page and put that name in, and then I'll bring it over to. You can sign that one too. Yep. Bring it over to Dana to have it signed. And then bring it all back down to Rob. <laughs> So they also, in this, um, in the last three years, well, four years ago contract, which I was working with, because um, I didn't want to reinvent the wheel, uh, they did say that the uh, discount, if annual invoices are prepaid, contractors shall discount the winter sand by 50 cents a yard. Um, so I asked them if we should leave that in, and she said yes. But I don't know if that means the whole annual invoice. Well, Usually we do half and half, and he gives us a 50, 50 Oh, okay. 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 We, we did half. We paid half, and we called it. Right. And that was. And that cut that that made a pretty significant dent in the overall yeah. cost. And um, that's the way it has been. That okay. When we pay the second part up front mm -hmm. and start hauling, we're we're pretty much good. Good to go. Yeah. All right. Good. And that's a one-year contract? Three. Three. Two thousand yards for 2023 and 4,000 yards for the next two years. Good. So. so that's done. Yeah. That's done. One other question, Brandy. Did you get a hold of Dave and get things straightened out? No. I'm still playing phone tag. Um, I left a message. I had spoken with Greg on Friday, um, getting the information of the Richardson Road. Yes. It was up behind the elementary school that. Um, yes, that's we right. Too, I remember that name. Anyway. Um, yeah, there's some um, misunderstanding of, of which years. Um, so I'm just waiting to hear back from Dave. Okay. So did you bring us anything new on the tax rate? Did I bring you anything new other than um, my error of $19.68? Did you find that darn thing? Um, no, I did not. <laughs> She's obsessing over $19.68, but that's so, what accountants do. <laughs> Chuck, anything else before we move on? No. Okay. No, I'm good. Great. Thank you. Yeah, you are. We're ahead of schedule, Miss Brandy, so take your time. Copies, if anybody would like one. I wouldn't mind one. Yep. Right, this is the backup. I squeeze by you, and I'm going to give this to Chuck. Alrighty. Um, highlighted is backup from where I. Got the numbers from yes, this is the grand list also report out of the grand the list, grand list. Right. this is fiscal years going backwards yep um like that's all the same stuff that i have right i didn't know if you wanted that or you wanted me to hold that there's tax rate um copies sure and do you have one for jim if not jim this one 
Yes. Oh, no, 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 we can share, we can share something. Mm -hmm. So this is the same stuff we worked on last week? Yep. Okay. By me deducting the $19, it doesn't change the tax rate. Yeah. But I just wanted to. <laughs> if it did, that would be pretty impressive. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Peace of mind. I understand. So it looks like, based on um, the, all the information that Randy and I checked and double checked last week, that uh, we could have a tax rate of 64.4 cents. Uh, that's 10.2 cents higher than last year, but 6.4 of those cents are for the fire station. And uh, at least 3.8 cents increase for the general fund. And my question for you and the board is, is that, uh, I think, where is that chart? Look at it. That is, there's another Excel sheet, I think, it's somewhere that looks like this. Let me just borrow yours for a moment. Okay. This is... Sorry. Yeah. yeah. So my question is, there are two kind of big expenses that weren't uh, considered back when the budget was made in January of last year. No, that is the $7,000 that we're paying to Hardwick for West Woodbury Road, Road right. and the $9,000 that we're paying for the rebuild of the 550. So if we added another penny to that tax rate, that would pretty much cover those two additional. Hmm. Otherwise, we can probably squeak through, but since we're relying on or uh, any excess that we have to help pay for the new truck. We don't want to squeeze too much. Right. Yeah. Brandy's going to be really mad if we have to go out quarreling. Oh, gosh. I did attend yeah. a three-hour Vermont League of Cities and Towns webinar on financing for select boards, and one thing that I wrote down that I thought was important was that they said the budget is the voters' plan for spending. It is not a mandate. The select board has some inherent authority to deviate from the plan. There may be instances in which the select board is legally required to deviate from the plan. So, things happen. <laughs> so if we added that additional cent, that would bring us up to 0 0.654. That is 10 or 11 cents increase the school tax for residences is going down 3.88 cents. Right. So. We're going to make up that difference pretty quick. Make up some of that. <laughs> yeah. Makes sense. I'm in favor of the one penny increase on the tax rate to 0.654 cents for the next fiscal year. Okay, so I'll make second a motion. That motion. Oh, you want? <laughs> I'll make a motion. Yeah, I'll, I'll second it. I was going to say it first. So. Okay. so, our tax rate, municipal tax rate for the tax bills coming out soon for fiscal year 2023 will be 0. 0.654. Thank you. Sorry. Yeah. Um, do we have to vote? I guess we have to vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. <laughs> All right. That All right. finishes our setting of the tax rate for the next fiscal year. Uh, we're on to, we're a little early, but we're on to uh, other business. Uh, first is to schedule a meeting of ARPA funding 
for the applicants that we have currently, of which we, I think we have 10 outstanding. Yeah, I'd like to just for the, in case anybody is watching this, I'd like to read what the requests are. So far we've got uh, the ones that we've already approved were the uh, $15,000 for the outdoor pavilion and a couple thousand dollars for um, uh, some of the Zoom equipment that we bought and for the Wi-Fi for the town hall. And then uh, Brandy requested, put in a request for digitizing the rent land records for $25,000. Town office insulation for 6761 The town hall committee came up with $30,000 to uh, help weatherize, start to weatherize the town hall so we can use it more often. I think that's going to be really light. I think that's probably going to cost more than that, but in the meantime, for a start, the Woodbury, uh, the Planning Commission is recommending that we go with the CV Fiber broadband request, which is $50,000 for high speed internet around the town. If we give them their $50,000, if they if we make the commitment before sometime in the middle of September, then it will be matched one to one. And hopefully at the meeting that we have, people will um, have, have questions. Right. I have some other questions about how they came up with the $50,000 because their letter talks about 700 and something households that need to be served, and we've only got not even 400 households. households. So I just want to find out where they get their numbers. Uh, Elizabeth Stratton recommended that we pay $4,000 for a commercial tent. Uh, she also requested the Friends of Woodbury Elementary for $800 to make up for lost fundraising revenue. Woodbury Community Library requested $10,000 lost, lost fundraising revenue and additional programs, which it would be nice to hear some more about. And the Woodbury Fire Department requested $111,677 for uh, extra pay for their volunteers and lost fundraising revenue. So I'm thinking it's maybe some How night... How can it be lost fundraising fund revenue? They don't do any fundraisers. <laughs> you can ask them. You can ask them when we have that. I will. Believe me. Thank you. <laughs> Diana, yeah. what was in between the digitizing and the town hall? Uh, It'd be the fourth one on the list. This, the uh, the town office. How much was that one for? Six seven six one. For weatherizing. Yeah. And yeah, and that's what you know. These these we really need more expert advice on both of these weatherization projects. So those two hundred dollar energy mm -hmm. audits that we got just weren't really sufficient very helpful. Yeah. yeah. But we do have to schedule a meeting for this. Yeah. And that and that's our that's our goal. <coughs> yeah. So. So schedule a public meeting for this. Uh, what do you think? Maybe next Monday? Well we have to we should probably warn something. Yes. Yeah, but a special meeting only requires a 24-hour notice. But I'd like to get enough yeah, get enough warning out there so that people know that they can come and listen. So maybe the middle of next week would be better. I think that might be better. Yeah, like Wednesday maybe. Yeah, maybe Wednesday of next Where? week. I was thinking I was thinking town hall. I was going to say if you get this many. No, this is not going to work. So we have to. We'd have to reserve <laughs> yeah. the town hall. Yeah. So we we'll make a notice. What's, what's next Wednesday's date? That would be the seventeenth. I got a memorial service in there Wednesday night. How oh. about the oh. uh, Tuesday, the sixteenth? Yeah, that's open. Okay. That's also a state holiday. Ooh, is that a good thing or a bad thing? That's a good. Don't know. Just tell question. me. Question. <laughs> Battle of Bennington. Uh, <laughs> sure. Oh, it is Battle. 
Well, a lot of these people will have time to come after they've <laughs> rested during their day off. <laughs> if we push it much further, it's after the next select board meeting. Yeah, well, there's always the Thursday that week. There's the Thursday of that week. Should be the 18th. Yeah. Is that open for the town hall? Yes. Miss Turkey? Yes. Yeah, I've got something on the 18th, but I think it's during the day. Well, so, there's sorry. nothing that says that we can't do it the following week. That's true. I mean, it gives, it gives fair warning, and, mm -hmm. you know, it's just the minimum mm -hmm. warning. Mm hmm. How about the 23rd, which would be a Tuesday? But do we have a meeting on the that Monday night. We do. So, yeah, we could do it that next Tuesday, the 23rd. Ms. Jerky, is that open on the calendar? It yeah. is open on the calendar, and the town office is also open Tuesday nights. <sighs> well, how about that Wednesday? <laughs> What's Wednesday? The 20... Wednesday be the 24th. The 24th? Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, we're also going to have to have time to have a meeting, a select board meeting, to make our choices. That's true. After that. So... So, like Brady just suggested, why don't you go back to the 18th? And then you would have that following Monday for your select board meeting. Yeah, we can just have a conversation. We're probably going to take more than one are, conversation. Are, to decide. are you available on the 18th? Oh, yeah. Okay. You said I had something, but I think it's I during the day. Okay. <laughs> so let's plan for Thursday the 18th. Mm. Mm -hmm. And what time? Let's do 6 p.m., please. That will give me a, a time to put it on Front Porch Forum a couple of times, put it on the website, and contact the individuals who've made the requests. So I'll just reiterate that will be a special meeting for ARPA funding discussions Thursday, August 18th at 6 p.m. in the Woodbury Town Hall. Right. Okay. We are moving on to, unless there's other discussion about ARPA funding and ARPA meeting. I do have, I just want you to yep. take this. This is a, uh, some reading material regarding the CV Fiber Memorandum of Understanding, understanding. they want us to okay. sign. How does that work with town equipment? <clears throat> How do you mean? Oh, so um, the town could request, you know, I mean, we could have used all the money to buy a truck and that way everybody would share some of it. But well, I was thinking more happen. of a grader. <laughs> of a grader, yeah. 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 And then everybody would get the benefit of it. Yeah. Well, come to the meeting. Just, be, just, just, because, yeah. just because we put up these doesn't mean that you yeah. can't. Throw there was a deadline for, for applications, though, with that. Technically, there was. But, but there was uh, a committee that they had. Yeah. But they will be getting another installment of the same amount. Yeah, but we're not this just... fall, so there'll be another run for money. There'll be another... What was the amount? It was only like 130, yeah, hundred thirty thousand dollars, I think. Right. Yeah. You're talking three hundred eighty thousand for a grader. I know, but, but it's a down nice payment. But it'd be a nice chunk for a down payment it without would. having to raise taxes. Mm -hmm. It would. But I don't think we're limited to just the first year payment. No, we're not. In this round. We're not. Other ARPA discussions. Okay. We're going to move on to ongoing compliance cases. Well, there was one person, Brandy, who came in the office and Brandy thought he might show up tonight, but he didn't. Oh. So... I guess um, Ainsworth Road, the attorney sent a letter, a letter. Yeah. another letter, the owner did not show up at her status conference. Oh, hearing was not attended. I've been by a couple times and haven't seen much of a change, change. as far as things that have been cleaned up. Uh, the other one, the uh, ongoing... Flat Street um, 
situation. Um, Skip's been, you know, totally busy with his wife, and he's not going to be able to deal with that for a while. So. Okay. And the other one on Woodbury Lake, the skip, um, the uh, sixty days passed without anything happening. So I guess that's just going to. It's going to go away, go. basically. Yeah. yeah. How about the deal up the end of the old car? Well, that's what the person was coming in tonight, I thought. That was the point. So, um, what have you seen more up there? No, they put that camera in and they've got it 25 feet, oh, 25 is. and a half feet away from the center of the road. Okay, well, that's good. Well, now it's the parking. Uh, it's the parking problem. Yes. So, their parking in the is, road. On, is on the class fours. I'm trying to find... <laughs> Oh, uh, uh, now I just started this today, but map information to show them what they have. And there is an old survey map when Dennis Ainsworth first sold that piece to uh, Coleman. But it's really, really small, so I'm going to try to make it a little larger. And it does have the what it what it calls it calls a woods road, but then it, there's a note on the survey that says that these woods roads might actually be town roads. And so I'm going to try to overlay that with the current plan that shows where the new right of way is, so at least they might have some idea of where they have <laughs> where their land is. <laughs> And whether or not, uh, you know, I talked to Bob about whether or not a camper needs a permit. And, you know, it's really not a structure. If it's got a plate on it, it doesn't need a permit. permit. It's got wheels under it. And, uh, I mean, living there In is... In the tents? <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> they're not a structure but there's either. A so. thing, there's a thing that looks like it's like too st a taller kind of thing. I couldn't look too closely. The white one? No, it's a uh, it's brown. Oh, I don't know. Some tarps or something, and I mean, I just got, I drove up and I got out of my car and I said hello, you know, anybody here? And then I heard dogs barking, so I I left. But well, I went up the same night. Oh. And there was nobody there. I pounded mm -hmm. on the door and everything, and the dogs started tearing it down. Mm -hmm. So. And you said you'd been there in the morning, so I called Kim Sill. Mm-hmm. And he was going to go up mm -hmm. and see what the deal was with the dogs mm -hmm. being left in the camper because mm -hmm. it was hot that day. Yeah, what she told me was that when I was there, it scared her son, so it must have been somebody there. But <laughs> I, you know, I don't know. And I the, don't have any idea either, but it's going to be an awful mess. Yeah. So. It's not a year-round residence, though, right? <laughs> uh, it's not a year... We've got people trying to live in RVs. I think this, this is going to be. Because they said this they is... wanted to build a yurk. That would be... Oh, house. that so changes that things a bit. But that's a structure, and that would be... It should be turned be down hands on. Hmm? Yeah. It should be turned right down. Right, right. Yeah, so she told me that they moved up, moved up there to try to have some peace and quiet and they just keep getting hassled well you know <laughs> well they picked an interesting spot to get yeah, peace and quiet they got messed up with somebody they shouldn't have gotten messed up with exactly how much peace and quiet are they going to have when those tractor trailers start coming down through there right. and not through there every day yeah. every day they're doing yeah. it now they're doing it now yeah <laughs> they come past our house every day mm. but it's my wake up call <laughs> you know if, if they would comply yeah. with the state laws and the zoning regulations, they can have all the peace of quiet they want. Mm. But if they're not complying and leaving stuff in the middle of the road and everything else, mm -hmm. they deserve they're to be hassled. hassled. That's right. Yeah. Right. yeah, they did. The, that truck was up there that day. Yeah. In the road. And I, did, I didn't go over. She said there was a note on it that it was broken down and they were going to... And then she said they removed it later that day, but... Uh, it must have been late that day because yeah. I was there and I even called the state troopers trying to get them to go up and mm -hmm. they wouldn't go up. Mm -hmm. So they didn't no. have anybody that could be. Oh, another thing, when I went up to West Woodbury, oh my God. Cute, huh? But there are no cones in the road. There was no, there was a 
truck sort of half in the road, but it yeah. wasn't blocking traffic or anything. My God, it looks like somebody, it looks like they demolished 10 buildings and just spread everything all over them. Oh, yeah. It's <laughs> been that way. That's what I've been bitching about. Yeah. Who knows how many people there are? I mean, again, it's probably not a zoning thing if they're not building anything, but... <sighs> I don't know, but... You sure you want to be health officer? <laughs> Do you want to get a badge? <laughs> yes. I'm sure. I waiting to yes. give somebody the badge. <laughs> really? <laughs> Yes. No, it's a constable. <laughs> Sorry, it's a constable badge. We have, you know, one. He gave that one too. But it is pretty sad the way some people are having to try to live. But it's not safe either. It's not safe. My worry is, I've met twice coming from Hardwick on Route 14 with frog hopping across the road from Ainsworth Road to the other side. And these kids you mean are kids? kids? These are little kids. Uh, yeah. Yeah. These are little kids. And they're nice kids. So how much did our, that last visit that we had with the attorney? That is in your bills. Yeah. To be paid, it's around 700 Well, yeah. it made much of a difference. But. Okay. I don't know. The way land is selling in Woodbury, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's still steady. Yeah. The way, maybe some of these people could get rid of their land and have enough money to move to Hardwick or something. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, the state is supposedly pay, you know, putting out all this money for housing and stuff. I don't know how people get it. So, I guess we don't need an executive session. No, we can't do that. So... Well, I've noticed, like, it's, I think I might have said this at the last meeting. I noticed, uh, I, I read the notices from other towns sure, in the sure. paper, you know? <laughs> and I noticed that some towns just automatically put executive session at the end, at the end of their agenda in case they need it. So... Anyway. Yep. But in this case, we do. We don't. So I had will... gotten a call from a lady up in West Woodbury. And I don't have the note right here. I can't remember her name. But she told me that Harry Daly had called her and the people at the end of West Woodbury Road had been burning on her property. Mm. Okay. And I believe it was Diana suggested that I get in touch with the fire. The fire. 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 And I sent it to Paul and he was going to go check it out. And I didn't hear anything back from Paul. Mm -hmm. Okay. We'll check it with Paul. Yeah, I did see it when I was up there. I did notice a place on the other side of the road that looked like an old foundation or something where there'd been some burning. The person that owns the property is as is an out of state. Still. Yeah. Doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. I'll check it with Paul. Thank you for calling about that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Appreciate that. Okay, so I will make a motion to adjourn the August 8th Woodbury Select Board meeting. Mm -hmm. Can I have to second that? Okay. Oh, second. Yeah. All those in favor. <laughs> Can't wait to go. All those in favor say aye. 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 Meeting is adjourned.